What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be talking about that amazing win, that dynasty destroying win against Richmond. Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts, Instagram at Sweet Luke, TikTok, Sweet Luke, and Twitter, Sweet Luke, always posting daily, the best content you'll see on Instagram and on Twitter if you want to get a bit to know, and on Twitter if you want to get to know a little bit more about me, you jump on there. But if you are a new Sweeper, welcome, thank you so much for joining me and us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to get notifications when I post videos up. And if you are a return super, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me. We're nearly close to 2,000 um, subs, so we will be giving away a jersey really soon. But let's just jump into this review. On a super cold Sunday afternoon, the two you know biggest arch rivals and biggest names in the business, Collingwood and Richmond, went up against each other. Um, Richmond needed to win to um, you know, have a stake of claim for the uh, top eight, and they had just lost three in a row. We needed to win because we just needed to win. It was as simple as that. We needed to win to, to prove the doubt is wrong. We needed to win for Harvey. We needed to win for like a morale sort of boost. And God, did we win. It wasn't... It wasn't pretty at, at, at the start. And not pretty because we were playing bad football. We were playing really good football. Uh, well, not really good. We were playing good football, decent football. But those first three quarters, Richmond were just a little bit more cleaner. They were getting um, you know, inside 50 and converting their chances more. We had a lot more inside 50s. But just typical Collingwood, we couldn't convert when we had the opportunity. We should have been up in front for, for most of the game. But... We waited until the fourth quarter and we have just become fourth quarter specialists because we put on a clinic again. Seven goals in the last quarter after kicking six goals up until three quarter time to Richmond's one goal in their in the last quarter. We were 20 points down going into that last quarter and I thought, man, I, I, I honestly, I turned to dad and I said, I've got a funny feeling about this that we might win. In the third quarter, we were just building a little bit of momentum. I know Richmond, you know, uh, kicked more goals than us in that quarter, but we just were building a little bit of momentum, and the, you could kind of see the cogs turning in the guys' heads, and and you know, Ollie Henry was was good. You know, the young kids were were standing up. Trey Rusco was good, and we'll talk a little bit about them uh, later. And then in that, you know, in that last quarter, Darcy Cameron kicks the first goal that starts the the cogs turning even more. Then Jamie Elliott. Taylor Adams, Jordan DeGoy puts us forward, Nathan Murphy, Brody Grundy. We kicked six goals in a row before Richmond um, kicked one. And by the time they kicked one, it was pretty much all over. But it was, the atmosphere was incredible. Now, it was a Richmond home game, but the crowd was insane. That Collingwood chant, it's so surreal being in the stadium when there's that Collingwood chant going. And there was probably only... I don't even know how many uh, people were at that at that game, but there wasn't, you know, Collingwood fans were struggling to get tickets because obviously it was a Richmond home game, like I just mentioned. So there was a lot more Richmond fans than there were us, but that chant just was so freaking loud and it was so good. And that last quarter was just football we haven't seen in a long time. And look, the Melbourne game we played really well, but I feel like that last quarter was better than that Melbourne game, um, you know, in Buckley's last game. That was reminiscent of the 2018 team that just wanted to attack, wanted to take the game on, going through the corridor. It was everything that Collingwood should be. But in saying that, and it's not really a negative, but in saying that, that sort of football has to be played earlier on in the game. We have to take our chances more. Look, I know, you know, there's no point in the first quarter trying to run through the corridor and, and have these 45 angled kicks where you're know, going to 50-50s because the game's not there to be won just yet. So I understand that. But that direct football, that quick football, you want to see that from the get-go. If Collingwood have another fourth quarter where they're down and they try and come back, I don't think my heart is going to take it. And I know a lot of Collingwood supporters' hearts aren't going to take it either because 
when you're in that position from down below and you try and claw your way back for either us to lose, like in the St. Kilda game, or us to win, that doesn't uh, doesn't bide too well with the old uh, with the old Hardo. So we like to look at a bit of statistics, and statistically, just looking on paper, we smashed them in pretty much every facet of the game. Plus pretty much 100 in disposals. Kicks we smashed them. Handballs, inside 50s. Efficiency inside 50s. Hitouts, Grundy dominated. Look, Grundy had a slow first three quarters, but in that last quarter, he stood up. When we needed our leaders to stand up, they all stood up. Taylor Adams, you know, Scott Pendlebury, Jordan Degoli, uh, Brody Grundy as well, Jack Crisp. The list just goes on. They all stood up when they needed to, and that's what you want to see from the leaders of your club. Now, but like I said, marks. Where we were plus pretty much 60 in marks. So they had 64 marks for the game. We had 122. What that tells me is that we just controlled the ball a lot more than they did. A little bit more switching. You know, just a little bit more possession. And you can see that because time in possession, we had 47%. They had um, 37 And especially in that last quarter, we had 62% of the ball as opposed to their 25%. We were just... We were just dominating. We were just dominating that entire game. And, and we were deserving winners. Yes, we were behind by a lot. And, you know, Richmond went on. I think they were about, I want to say, they were easily over 25 points up at one stage. Um, and the resilience and the perseverance of this team to just come back was... was it started a fire in the pit of your stomach and you go... We're actually going to be okay. We haven't had a good year, but you see things like this, and especially against Richmond, I don't care that they've lost three games in a row, but they're still the reigning premiers. They're still a good team. But you go, shit, we're actually going to be okay. This football club is going to be okay. This year, we can just write it off as just a year, as a shit year. Next year is when the party pies start. So a couple of um, players that I really enjoyed, like we won't talk about the obvious ones like Jordan Degoli, uh, Grundy, Adams, um, Pendlebury, because they all had fantastic games. But IQ off the halfback, he comes home, you know, he's taking out his keys in his wallet and he's putting Dustin Martin on the bench because Dusty was in his back pocket all game. Quainel just towered him up. I'm going to have a bit of a Quain or Highlights package come out on my Instagram tomorrow as well, which was amazing. Just the way he, just that run, his ability to just go back with the flight of the ball as well is great. Nathan Murphy, I love his efforts. I've always loved Nathan Murphy. Whether he, He's a bit of a utility. I kind of like him off that halfback and on that wing, but he was finding himself in positions half forward. He kicked that goal. Jordan Degoe set up that goal for him. Um, Jordan Degoe's maturity has just come out of nowhere in the last month, and I absolutely love to see that. He hits up Nathan Murphy. Nathan Murphy gets his first goal. Lots to like about Ollie Henry. He's still really raw. I think that was his third or fourth game. A lot to learn. A lot to learn, obviously, but I do like what I'm seeing from him. And one guy where I want to retract... Look, no, I'm not going to retract anything bad that I said about him because you can have bad games. It's football. It's life. You can have bad days. Callum Brown in the midfield, let me just get his stats up, but Callum Brown in the midfield was just crazy, absolutely nuts. It goes to show you what can happen when you play players in their rightful positions. Callum Brown is not a half forward, he's not a forward pocket, he's an out and out midfielder, and I know it's hard to crack into that midfield with, you know, Tay, uh, Jack Crisp in there now, Scott Pendlebury, Jordan Degoe, but he's a midfielder, you play him in the midfield. 24 disposals, 8 kicks, 16 handballs, 6 marks, 2 tackles, all in the middle, 83% disposal efficiency, uh, 2 intercept possessions, contested possessions, 3, like I said, 6 marks, a couple of clearances, a couple of tackles, a tackle inside 50, and 6 inside 50s. Sorry, and 330 meters gained. And that was from 75 minutes of game time. So, Callum Brown... That's it. He just stays in the midfield now. Um, and look, I know because of Josh Dacos is not in there as well, but having both Dacos brothers and Callum Brown in the mid... Look, I love that. 
and Tyler as well. We're not getting any younger. You know, Pendlebury, Cybot are not going to be there forever, unfortunately. Callum Brown needs to take that step up. And he showed us, he showed us the other day or yesterday or whenever this video is coming out, that he can take that step up and be an out and out midfielder and be a great one at that. All in all, there wasn't much to dislike about the game. Yes, our disposal efficiency in the first couple of quarters could have been better. They could be tightened up. That's what's really let us down in the last few weeks. It's been our disposal efficiency, our efficiency kicking at goal. Mycheck finished with one goal four or one goal three as well. We, we all missed a couple of um, easy shots. You tighten that up, you win those games against Geelong. Um, Port, Brisbane, St. Kilda, Fremantle. That's five games that you win, and you're pushing top six. You just tighten those up. Tighten those up in, during the off-season and during the season, you know. And we go far. We go far. Look, I don't want to... Let me just say that. We just go far. We just go far. But it was a fantastic win, especially to end Richmond's dynasty. <sighs> Nail in the coffin. Nail in the coffin. I... I Love it. I adore it. Being at the G is just crazy. That Collingwood chant, so goddamn good. But, final thoughts. If you haven't already, watch my Paul Curia interview slash Q&A video. Um, it was great. An hour and a half. I will be putting a highlights package together sometime this week. So be on the lookout for that. So if you don't, you don't have to watch the an hour and a half, it'll go on Spotify as well. So check that out. Leave your comments down below. I'll get to as many as I can. But in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shakers. Sweep you later. Ooh la la.